general election coming up, most people are nervously awaiting the future of our country. But one group of people are more nervous than the average punters, the Spads, who are working for both teams. Aileen MacDonald is the political editor of Itch Pitch, who have been closely following the Spads. So who exactly are these people? The Spads? Well, they're special advisors who are supposedly hired for their intelligence, um, but in general are a pretty homogeneously white Oxbridge crowd with about as much experience of the real world as a Kardashian. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you could say that I'm nervous. Um, it's my first job out of uni and, uh, well, it could all be over in a few weeks. What are your other options? If I could defect. Winning the election is our absolute top priority. I haven't given a second thought to what I'll be doing on May 10th, other than recovering from a massive champagne hangover. For the Labour Spads, it's all about image. They're trying to convince the world that their man is a social progressive and that their opponents are stuck in the past. It's too white, you can't see where the background ends and his hair starts. Yeah, maybe make the background a bit purple or pink or... Nah, it's too gay friendly. Yeah, uh, make it a bit more anti-gay. Okay... Let me darken him up a bit. I'm not sure we can have him blacken up. No, not every idea is a good one. The history of electoral strategy is a history of grave errors. So is that your strategy? No, it is not. He's the candy man, redistributing ill-gotten funds through highly efficient corporate taxation. It needs work. The Conservatives, meanwhile, have their own generation of bright young things working to sell Boris Johnson's brand of centrist politics to young radicals. Teaching children how to use combine harvesters so that they can learn about organic foods. An iPhone app which tells you how many pumpkin spice lattes you can afford with your tax break. A policy unit focused on improving mental health outreach for LGBTQ plus teens. An Etsy store selling uh, Bojo tea cosies. The party's a broad church. We have lots of ideas from lots of different ideological backgrounds. So you'd say that some are better than others? Y yeah. I think we can agree on that. A Ministry of Housing Twitter account that retweets spare room letting opportunities. Intercept. We buy a vintage Mini Cooper. We whack some epic speakers on the top. We drive around Britain playing God Save the Queen until we're a country of patriots again. Plan B. I mean, maybe I'd work for a housing charity or I could go back into academia. I'd quite like to get a PhD. So you'd fight the Tories from outside of politics? Uh, at this moment, I can't really say, but I don't really see it as a fight. More of a, an intellectual wrestling match, you know. Uh, Greco-Roman wrestling, I might add. None of that fake stuff with uh, The Rock Johnson. I actually don't mind the Labour Party. I've got a few friends who are Labour and they're uh, pretty nice people. Stupid people, I might add, but nice. So you wouldn't be particularly happy to see lots of Labour staffers out of jobs? I mean, I don't take pleasure in other people's misery. But they will be out of jobs along with 232 MPs. Now, I don't know what I'll do with the job market, but I'll be avoiding McDonald's for a while. With a precocious sense of importance, spads on all sides are awaiting a formative election period. In a few weeks' time, they'll be scrambling for jobs, and if history's anything to go by, they'll be applying for the most high-profile careers in the country. But for now, they await, nervously, for the British public to go to the ballot boxes and decide their fate. I'm Seamus O'Kelly, reporting from London for Iran Today. So